if we can identify the different patterns or the templates that we have in order to achieve different tasks in our business, there is a higher possibility that we'll be able to use some of these automated tools to help get that that temp or move that pattern along much faster and uh, just alleviate a little bit of the brain power that we need starting from zero all the time. Well, hello and welcome to another guest interview here on the Profit with Law podcast. I'm your host, Moshe Amsel, and I'm excited to dive into the conversation today because we're going to be going into artificial intelligence. Yes, that term AI that you hear thrown around, bantered around by everybody, uh, some knowing what they're talking about, many not knowing what they're talking about, uh, but there's a lot of traction and movement in it. I mean, the the big technology companies here in the US have just um, released their earnings. And uh, so much of that focus is on AI, both the capital expenditures that are upcoming because of it, but also uh, the massive momentum they already have uh, due to the adoption of AI. And there's so many applications out there that are using some form of this intelligence, which is basically being able to do uh, predictive analysis and uh, understanding human behavior and uh, and and modifying responses based on that. So really, really interesting stuff. But the question that we have as business owners is, how is this relevant to me? Um, and especially law firm owners where uh, we're trying to simply go out and serve our clients. We're trying to just do our thing and we've got this distraction coming our way. And, and the question is, is, is it a distraction or is it something that is going to absolutely um, change every, the way that you do everything in your business? Um, and that's why I'm excited to have our guest today. Our guest is Mitch Asser. Mitch is a world-renowned online summit expert. Uh, actually, we have history. Um, our paths crossed because... Um, I decided that we were going to run the Law Firm Growth Summit. The very first iteration of it was uh, with the typical uh, online marketing summit model where we ran it for five days, pre-recorded the uh, all of the interviews and, and basically dripped that content out over five days, but uh, made it free for people to attend and really uh, changed the way the law firm industry, uh, the small um, law firm uh, educational experience uh, was completely changed when we ran that summit back in 2019. And yes, it was before COVID. Um, but behind the scenes, uh, we looked like rock stars. But what people didn't know is that Mitch Asser and his team were the ones powering that event uh, and making it all happen. Uh, so uh, Mitch and I go back to uh, that time when we, we ran our first iteration of the summit. Uh, since then, our summit has changed. So we turned it into more of a online conference where everything is delivered live. Uh, people interact with each other. The, the uh, sponsors are able to interact with the audience and in, in their expo booth area. Uh, so we really have transitioned or transformed uh, the experience away from that typical online summit model. But uh, Mitch has uh, really... Um, conquered that that arena and uh, and it acquired a ton of knowledge in the in the process. So um, he's produced over sixty online summits over the last nine years, generating over one million leads for himself and his clients. Uh, he's now explored and conquered the new world of AI, making his entire lead generation strategy doable by the layman business owner. Uh, Mitch recently established a newsletter where he shares how you can use AI in your marketing without compromising the essence of your message based on the strategies he's used to generate over a million leads. And I'm excited to have him here today. Mitch, welcome to the show. Thanks, Masha. Great to be here. And, and what a great intro. Excited for this. Yeah, as am I. And uh, what people don't know, so some I typically batch my podcast recordings. I do one day a week. Uh, we do six episodes in the day, and uh, I, I'm sorry, one day a month, six episodes in the day, and that's it for for the month. Uh, but you and another guest that we have, who's gonna, I'm going to be recording right after this, um, are in Australia. 
and having those time zones match up with each other is near impossible. So um, it is uh, 10 p.m. Eastern on a Sunday night, and we're and we're here recording a podcast episode. So I, I just want our audience to appreciate what goes into putting this show on for them. Um, with uh, with you showing up bright and early in the morning for you, and me showing up re uh, really late at night, uh, cap uh, capping off the weekend. Uh, but I'm excited to be here to have this conversation. So, Mitch, real quick, our audience never heard of you. Uh, they want to know who you are. Give us the backstory of how you got into marketing and um, and now this new transition into AI. Yeah, of course. So uh, I, I guess it goes back about nine years where at that time I was just, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I absolutely knew I wanted to have some sort of location independence. So I tried everything back then from affiliate marketing to trying to figure out how to edit videos, build websites myself, learn copywriting, even, you know, crazy things like network marketing, uh, trading stocks and and Forex. Like I tried everything. And eventually after many, many failures, I came across this program about how to build an online virtual summit, which was great because you didn't really need to be an expert at anything. And at the time I wasn't, but the idea of having great conversations with great people who are experts and bringing that together into an event sounded very appealing to me. So I copied this, this pro or I followed this program. Uh, I put together uh, my first summit, which took about 200 and something hours back then because of how limited the tools were and how, uh, cause I didn't have a lot of money to invest in it. So I had to do everything myself and I was excited for a massive summit to occur. And after, you know, three months of work, I had 400 people sign up and didn't even make my money back in terms of the amount of money I spent on tools. So it was quite disheartening in the beginning, but there was just something about that model that really appealed to me of getting to connect with great people in the industry and then uh, helping them reach a larger audience, which eventually we did get to. So a couple of years down the track, after continuing on that path, we started doing summits that were uh, bringing in tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And yeah, it's just kind of snowboarded ever since then. And it's been a fun journey. And like like you said in the intro there, I've learned a lot, especially not what to do. So can definitely save people time there. Yeah, and I love I love the fact that you you stuck with it. I mean, um, it, it's it's really the 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 key to success with any business, and and you know, law firm owners are no different. Um, it's so easy to throw in the towel at the beginning, and the beginning is the hardest part of growing any any type of business. It, it, you know, you really have to figure a lot of things out, um, and a lot of it, you know, people just can't teach the things that you need to just learn on your own. Um, yeah. No matter what programs you take, no matter what processes you follow, no matter how much money you have in the bank, um, you're going to make some missteps along the way. And those missteps can be very costly. Uh, it can feel like you're, you're going nowhere. But if you stay the course, um, you're bound to overcome those challenges and, and be successful. Um, I really don't know. And, and this is a, a good question that I mean, you, you kind of posed in the green room when we started. Um, and our audience is sitting there saying, well, this guy is talking about online summits. Like, is this even relevant to me? And I, I want to, it's really important for the rest of the conversation that um, our, my audience knows that they should be here, right? Um, so I actually don't know. There are probably some law firms that would benefit from a summit model. Um, generally, I think the the summit is designed to bring together a community of experts around a topic that is going to attract a field of people that um, that that topic is relevant to. So if your legal community, your legal market is one that you that's around a certain topic focus, uh, or you can bring a large group of people together that would make sense uh, to have your firm in front of, it could make sense for you to run a summit. But I think where the conversation we're going to go today is is just using your knowledge of what you did with summits and what you're doing now with artificial intelligence to understand how we can use this in many other ways in our business. And I think that that's really going to be the benefit of our our listeners sticking around and and listening to the rest of this interview is we're not going to be focusing on summits as a marketing tool, right? We're going to be talking about um what you can do to 
improve what you're already doing to leverage AI to uh, to make your your firm even better um, and more profitable. And that's where I want to start the conversation. Is you know what you you started this newsletter. You're 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 providing information to the the business community to say, hey, look, here's here's some things that you can do. And, and there's a lot of really good tools out there. Um, but there's also one of the questions I asked you and in, in before we started is, you know, is this just a distraction, right? Or is is it something that that people are going to uh, are, are going to uh, be able to use and 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 adopt productively? And your response was, yeah, most of it is a distraction, but there are some really powerful ones. So let's start the conversation there, right? Like, how does somebody even begin to think about? Is this something that would be beneficial to them? It, it, it's so overwhelming. Uh, where where do we start? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. And I, I guess, you know, I was always interested as soon as the re release of the first chat GPT that kind of caught the world world's attention. I was very interested in it by at that stage and started uh, using some of those tools immediately. I was already using um, Jasper, which was, uh, they, they had a different name at that point, which they had to change due to a Disney uh, trademark. But I spent all of last year trying to go through ChatGPT and figure out if it's useful. And what it actually did was it, it didn't really solve a problem for marketers who are really good at what they do. All it did was solve a problem for people who didn't know marketing at all and kind of got them to a level that was acceptable. But what quickly happened at that point was everybody started having an acceptable level of marketing, which then made ChatGPT irrelevant again or the quality of the, of the output irrelevant again because it just looked the same everywhere you turned. No matter what industry you're in, you would see the same terms pop up over and over again. And it kind of, in my opinion, at least from a from a marketing standpoint, is it kind of started to look a bit sloppy for a lot of businesses out there. However, when the new update uh, happened at the end of last year, so I think it was November uh, 2023, where ChatGPT improved, uh, they, they put out their new model, a few extra bonus tools uh, that they were working on behind the scenes. That's where things really started to, to change. The, the quality of the outputs were much better, provided that you were priming it, which uh, we could get into with uh, the inputs that you're putting into ChatGPT itself. And then from that, during the last year, I think there's been dozens of different tools launched every single week that were kind of built on the old model that wasn't that effective. So that means their tools are not that effective. And then if you spend any time on social media or on TikTok or uh, Instagram or, or Twitter or X, uh, you'll see these 20-year-old kids hyping up every single tool as if it's the greatest thing since sliced bread and it's going to make you a million million dollars in no time, which uh, as experienced business owners, we know it's completely untrue, but you do get caught up in that hype. You're like, oh, is this tool going to save me that time that they promised? But most of them don't. So what I really got into this year is how can I take my knowledge that I've accumulated over the last nine years and break that down into a bit of a scientific formula of uh, how do I structure emails? And, you know, rather than writing the, the copywriting itself for an email, I would say, okay, this first paragraph is typically a pain point. So then I would start to template all of my emails, all of my ad copy exactly like that and feed it into uh, OpenAI API or, the, or chat GPT uh, little sections at a time. And then if you work on little sections at a time, it can produce really high quality work that is exactly how you like it based on your experience, based on the templates or your uh, knowledge that you've accumulated over the years and just started working through every process like that. And uh, I've actually amazed myself at how effective that has been. I would say that we're down to saving 80% of what I used to do in terms of the marketing is uh, no longer needed by me. It's automated. And instead of it taking a few hours, most of them take 10 minutes or less to do, including human editing time. So yeah, there, there's really been a big change in the last few months that allows us to lean in if we do want to, you know, learn some of these basic no-code tools that anybody could use and um, just start to template that knowledge that we've all accumulated in our in our careers over the last little while. So, yeah, does that help a little bit? 
Yeah, but I think the there's a number of questions that this brings up. And the first one is, is marketing the only area or, or the big area where this is useful? Or um, are there other places in the business that this tool or other AI tools can be used that would would change the way that we do work that would change the way that we that we do what we do um and and the question behind the question um is as a law firm owner i hope that most of our listeners are not doing their own marketing that they have a marketing agency they have somebody on their team that's doing the mark their marketing so it's not it 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 does not make sense for them to start messing around with the tool to teach it prompts to get it to say, do the right thing so that they can now do their marketing in 10 minutes a day instead of three hours because someone else was supposed to be doing that. Right. So it, it, it should make someone else more efficient, but not necessarily, um, you know, help, help them. Um, now it does help them if they, you know, get their team to do it, but I guess it's the, it's two questions, but it's really one, right? Like, is, what is the real use case for a business owner um, in the realm of the divisions in their company? And then how do we deploy this or or get our team to use it in a way that at the end of the day, it's making them more efficient, which in turn makes me more profitable rather than me just thinking about being able to save my own time. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. And there's there's really two answers to this. And we'll start more high level first, go to a specific example afterwards, which is for everybody in the in the business, no matter what role they're in, whether it's marketing, sales, operations, um, finance, even, there's going to be patterns in the way that they do their job. And even you as a as a business owner or the listener who's listening right now as a business owner there's still input that you need to do for each of those teams, right? So what are what are the steps that you do to provide that input to each of those team members? And is there a pattern to each time you do those things? And then can you then hack that pattern by helping it maybe give you a, an hour head start or saving you an hour each time you have to do that particular process? So that's kind of the, the direction I was going is uh, – if we can identify the different patterns or the templates that we have in order to achieve different tasks in our business, there is a higher possibility that we'll be able to use some of these automated tools to help uh, get that that temp or move that pattern along much faster and uh, just alleviate a little bit of the brain power that we need starting from zero all the time. So that's kind of the high level, and you know maybe a great exercise would be to look at. Uh, you know, your calendar for the last few weeks and what where have you spent all of your time over the last three weeks? What are those things? Are there any reoccurring patterns there that could maybe be templated and, and start to look at that as a step-by-step -step process and figure out if there's a way to automate that? And even if you wanted to consult with, you know, an automation expert, that could be effective as well as a, as a law firm owner. Uh, so that's one part of it. The second part of it is one big example there that I think everybody would be um, struggling with at the moment, especially if you're here listening to this podcast, is there is a huge amount of uh, noise out there right now in the AI world. So you're probably bombarded every single day with different news articles, different newsletters, um, different posts from people that you follow on social media. And you, it can get to a point where that becomes very overwhelming. So one very simple use case here of what I'm explaining that would be relevant for everybody is you can actually use automation tools uh, and summarize all of that information down into much easier bite-sized pieces of a content, plus then ask the AI if that content would be relevant for you and your business. So as an example of this, uh, I wrote about this in my newsletter that's going out tomorrow uh, at the time of recording, so it'll already be out by the time people are listening, is there's a tool called Feedly, so F-E-E-D-L-Y, and you can set up your own filters within that tool that the tool actually uses AI itself. They don't really tell you how it uses it, but uh, you can set up a feed that will check all of the different RSS feeds for different publications that you might follow. Uh, so if there's people who are putting out new podcasts like this one, 
um, you could put that into the feed or you could put in articles from, you know, governing bodies where maybe they have some important announcements that are coming out that you want to stay on top of and feed that into Feedly, uh, given the name, and it will watch that content for you. And even just by putting all of that content into that one platform, plus uh, there's also a newsletter option where you can generate an email address, uh, a Feedly email address, sign up for the newsletters that you want to sign up for, and it will bring all of those newsletters into the platform as well. So that gets it out of your inbox. So you're not tempted to read that for an hour when you get to work each morning, um, which I, I definitely do way too much. So the, even just that tool alone without any automations behind it is, is going to save you a lot of time. But we can take it a step further. And there's another automation tool called Zapier. So Zapier will connect with so many different apps through the API and kind of connect them all together to make sure that all of your different tools are talking to each other when you need them to be. So we can send the information from Feedly through Zapier into the OpenAI or ChatGPT API. And we can do, the way that I uh, have found it to be most effective so far is creating two steps. So first we want to summarize each article. So instead of reading maybe, maybe a thousand words, we can summarize it down to a hundred words and get a basic gist of what that article is about before we dive in further. But secondly, once it has uh, created that summary, you can then create your own prompt. And you might say something like, uh, I run a law firm in this particular area. These are the types of clients that we're typically looking for. Is this article that you just summarized relevant for my business? And ChatGPT will look for keywords that uh, may find some relevance there and it will tell you that whether it's relevant or not. And then you, the final step is you just send that all to a destination where you want to gather that information. Probably the best place for that would be Google Sheets. So you can send all of that information into a Google Sheet. So the only step that you need to do each day to, to stay up to date with latest news is to open up this Google Sheet, check the column to see which ones that ChatGPT thinks is going to be relevant for you. If it's relevant, you can read the summary. If the summary is uh, not giving you enough information, you can click the URL and go straight into the article to read the full one. So just that process alone, if you do want to stay up to date, and consume a lot of content without getting overwhelmed, that could save you an hour per, per day, um, at least an hour per week for sure. So that's just one simple process that we can do to start saving ourselves a little bit of time and bandwidth and, and ultimately uh, getting rid of that overwhelm that you know we're just bound to be uh, caught up in if we continue staying up to date with every single tool that's coming out. So really interesting. Um, I mean, Feedly has been around for forever. I remember using it uh, probably um, six, seven years ago. I don't use it right now, but probably should go back to it. Uh, but but it, it's been it's been around forever. So it's interesting to to hear that reintroduced as as something that you can use to make yourself more productive um, in this way. But it's really uh, it's really interesting. And when you start to think of combining tools, stacking tools, um, it, it really opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Um, so just just thinking about it that way is, is very interesting. Uh, I, I still think it, it requires um, a level of sophistication in the way that you think to even come up with that idea, um, which I guess then could be, oh, that, that's another use of ChatGPT is to help me find uses of ChatGPT, right? But um, uh, a little, getting a little meta there. But I'm wondering, are there are there people out there that their job is to come in as a consultant into your business and to look for opportunities for how you can improve things or do things better be, you know, using AI without you needing to be the mastermind? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's going to be a job that is going to be demanded a whole lot more. I, I do know that there are some people out there that are talking about it, uh, even if there are quite a lot of automation experts on Upwork who may be able to do a bit of consulting as well. So there are people out there, but I think this is this could become a a role within an organization as well. Somebody who comes into the organization, gets to learn every single process from every single team member and just finds these little 
little parts of their their roles that they can make 5% better or 10% better. And maybe it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you think about it this way, if you have 10 people in your organization and you make all of them 10% better, that's one human that you no longer have to hire to keep scaling up because you've just saved 100% of time. So um, yeah, I think there, there's multiple ways. Look for some consultants. Uh, I do do write about it in my newsletter, how we're using it as well. And and uh, yeah, see, just just spend a little bit of time thinking about it. I think, you know, getting outside of the business rather than always being in it and just having some thought around how can we begin to make things a little bit more efficient uh, could do wonders as well. Like, you know, if, if people have got their business well underway into seven, seven, eight figures, which I imagine many of your listeners are at, then they definitely have the expertise to, to uh, find these little snippets within their business to automate as well. Yeah, and and the the next question I wanted to pose to you, and and you're not, I I'm assuming that you're not an expert on this, um, so I'm kind of just asking you for your opinion. It's easy to see how I can use the ancillary pieces of the business that I do to try to automate things and make things better with ChatGPT. So if marketing was something we talked about. We talked about, you know, your own your own uh, consumption of news articles. Uh, I'm sure that there's things that we can do around in the finance side of, of the business and the sales automation side. Um, but what about the actual delivery of legal services? Um, and Here's where I'm sure that AI can do a great job. Um, and uh, one of the things that a lot of law firms spend a lot of time on is is writing a legal brief or um, uh, drafting a legal document. So, for example, estate planning attorneys do a ton of drafting to draft wills and estates. Uh, I'm sorry, wills and trusts. Um and um and litigation um there's there's legal briefs that are that are written um to to essentially uh bring something to court uh and i'm guess I, i'm guessing that you can't have it done 100 percent through through ai but it maybe it can get you 80 percent of the way there and you're just filling in the gaps or cleaning it up rather than needing to write the whole thing from scratch um but I see the challenge being that there's there, people are going to be very wary of having a tool take over the thing that needed to be done by humans up until now. What are your thoughts on that kind of use of it uh, as far as the adoption? Uh, is it something that could be done? Is it something that should be done? Um, should Should we start looking at bringing in an AI expert to help with that? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a great question. And that's the question that most people are afraid of is how long until my job disappears because of this technology? And uh, are you are you aware of the company Do Not Pay? I think it's do not pay dot com. No. Uh, so they're already doing this for some aspects of law. So I think it was originally started for um, helping people get out of like traffic tickets and, and those types of um uh, fines and and helping them fight that battle legally where you would pay a certain fee and then they would uh, use AI to create um, something. I don't know the legal terms, uh, but to to help you fight that ticket so you didn't have to pay. And I think they've then moved into a whole host of other legal aspects as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting question. Um, I, my opinion right now is probably the writing is on the wall that at some point in time in the next maybe i don't think it'll be in the next few years but absolutely in the next 10 years is uh a lot of that will then be written by ai and probably with more accuracy as well uh so that that then as a business owner you do need to be thinking a little bit differently long term as if this does happen then what is my play uh, fortunately, I think business owners and entrepreneurs are very resourceful. So I think we'll always have uh, something to do, to do, and I think we'll always have the opportunity to build great businesses. But it may just look very different. And instead of building a you know a, an eight figure law firm with fifty employees, maybe you only have to have three. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to look, but it's a it's a very interesting uh, topic to think about. But it's going to happen in every single industry, and. I guess if we look back in history at any big techni technological advancement, 
the same question's always been posed. And, you know, when we first got the tractor, it put 80% of farmers out of work almost overnight because they didn't have to be out there in the fields digging every day manually. We could now use a tractor. And all of those people didn't go hungry. They just found jobs elsewhere over time. So yeah, there's gonna, definitely going to be big changes. There's def definitely going to be a lot of new skills that we need to learn. Um, there's probably going to be a few redundant jobs within our organizations, but I think there will always be more that we will have to work on. There'll be newer goals, newer uh, dreams that we have and and uh, different ways to do things, bigger challenges. So I think there will always be a use case there for um, the different law firms as such, but it may be in a very different way. Um, and I guess, you know, from a personal standpoint, whether it's law or health or uh, you know, even politics, if we can have more millions, maybe billions of points of data to make a decision through uh, AI, as long as it is used in the right way, isn't that better than, you know, what a, a limited uh, human mind can can handle? Uh, so it's, yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting topic that I think, you know, it's going to get talked about over the years to come in much more depth. Yeah, I mean, look, I I think that market efficiencies are gonna are going to get to a point where I mean, it's been getting that way over time anyway. But where where they're so efficient uh, that I mean, you you won't be able to just put money in the stock market and expect a you know a ten to twelve percent return on an annualized basis because everybody's going to be using the same exact strategy. Everybody's going to be doing exactly the same investing and they're not, they're going to stay away from the same investments because all the analysis is, is being done for you. Uh, it's a very interesting thing to think about. I think in, in, in legal, at least where we can start to envision the parts of the business that are going to go by the wayside or, or get done by a tool that your expertise is going to be more in the the strategy or the plan that's going to be used but not in the execution of the plan um and you know and and that's and and then that's really the way it's been going anyway i mean if we just think about you know 15 years ago most law firms didn't have a computer in the firm you know they were the, probably one of the last adopters of technology into into the industry and now i mean uh legal tech is 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 is, is trying to play catch up and doing a great job at it but um i mean there are still firms out there that just op don't operate uh, with you know on with, with computers right like it's and it's wild to think about um but once computers were adopted i mean it got rid of most of the file clerks that are needed, right? And I mean, the more that we go paperless, the more the electronic signatures are acceptable and things can be submitted online to the courts, um, you know, the less the couriers are needed, the less that, uh, you know, that that people are needed in the office to make copies of, of things and and print them out 700 times. So, um, you know, there, there's a lot of that, that that's been happening over time and this is just the next iteration of it. So um, I, I don't think it's being worried about whether the firm will have a position in the marketplace or, you know, will have something to sell. Uh, it's just really understanding and staying on top of what's out there and really being a, an early adopter of new technology so that you're not caught on the tail end of it, but rather, and trying to play catch up, but rather you're at the front of it and letting other people try to try to catch you um, is, is really where I think we need to be. Um, Mitch, we are out of time. This has been a great conversation. I wish that we could talk for two hours because there's so much to cover. We'll probably have to have you back. Um, excuse me, back again. But uh, you have this newsletter that that you put out. I'm assuming that that is the thing that people can uh, jump on and and give you their email address and have you start sending it to them so that they can stay on top of uh, some of the latest uh, uh, ways that that you're innovating and using uh, and using AI and and helping people to to improve uh, what they're doing and their their process. Uh, at the end of every episode, I I allow my guests to uh, or invite my guests to share how people can get in touch with them and, and take the next steps with them. I'm assuming uh, that you want to share the newsletter. I'll give you the forum to do that. But also, if you can share one parting piece of advice or wisdom with our, our listener base as we close out the show, um, and we'll, we'll, take, we'll take a wrap there. Yeah, thanks, Mosher. I appreciate that. Um, just head to my website, mitchassar.com. 
sure it'll be linked in the notes as well and uh, sign up for the newsletter. And yeah, I do dive into a lot of different use cases that we can uh, use as experienced business owners as well. So, uh, and yeah, I, the the final piece of advice would be to also lean into that learning. I, I think there's been multiple technological advancement cycles in the past that uh, have been that like the early adopters have got the the biggest results in the end right so yeah really lean into it spend a little bit of time five percent of your time each week just learning what other people are doing in not just your own industry but in other industries as well and uh maybe stay away from those tiktok videos and focus on the experienced business owners that are actually using it in real businesses as well Awesome. Thank you, Mitch. And folks, uh, we mentioned the Law Firm Growth Summit, uh, which Mitch was uh, one of the uh, people that helped me get it off the ground the first time we ran in 2019. We do have our next event coming up May 21st to the 23rd of 2024. So if you're listening to this um, and that that date has not passed yet, um, go to lawfirmgrowthsummit.com. Registration doesn't open uh, until a couple of months before the, the event, uh, but we do have a, a waitlist page there. Uh, you can put in your email address and then we'll let you know once registration is open. Uh, but we also want you to mark your calendars as three days, uh, May 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. And we are going to start unveiling an amazing speaker lineup uh, over the course of the, of the upcoming weeks. Uh, really excited to be getting another one of these events uh, off the ground um, and uh, bringing in a, a, a bunch of experts to uh, really help uh, you with with growing your law firm. Uh, so uh, stay tuned uh, for more information. And if this is uh, one of your first times listening to the show, we want to make sure you hit that subscribe button uh, so that you get notified every time we release a new episode. We're here every single week. New episodes are released on Thursday morning. Uh, and we are excited uh, to share our next guest with you uh, in a week. Take care. 